Good afternoon and welcome to your old news update. I'm Bud Driscoll. And before we begin, I'd like to tell a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Eagle Crest Retirement Community up on East Magnolia and Smoky Hill Museum, 211 West Iron. And then a shout out to my partner, um, Izzy Fitz, a la Tim Andrew, who's still recovering from a long illness. So give him your thoughts and prayers. And topping the old news headlines for this week, we will go back 25 years to February 18th, 1992. Good neighbors who pulled a car from a muddy road were surprised when the car they rescued later collided with one of their own vehicles. The accident occurred late Saturday night when Les Kinsler and his daughter Kathleen were returning home from rescuing a car driven by Eric J. Taylor. Taylor's car had been stuck on Woodward Road. Kathleen Kinsler was driving in the lead pickup on East Cloud, followed by her father on a tractor and Taylor's car. Taylor passed and the tractor collided with the Kinsler car. Taylor and Kathleen Kinsler were treated at Asbury Salina Regional Medical Health Center for minor injuries. Taylor, however, was arrested for driving under the influence and providing sheriff's deputies with false information about his involvement with the accident. Well, sometimes being a good Samaritan just doesn't pay off, although it's nice to be one. Now we're going to go back 75 years to February 18, 1942. City officials prodded for information on the situation issued a final warning this week reminding delinquent dealers to secure 1942 milk permits. Approximately 20 of a total of 200 or more have not yet obtained the permits, but those failing to do so this week will be faced with a warrant for their arrest. R.S. Fashnat, milk inspector, declared today. A milk inspector. Wow, I didn't know there was one. All places of business offering milk for sale are required to have city permits, which can be obtained through the office of Charles Banker, city clerk, not city banker, but city clerk. So don't go with that underground black market milk um, thing because you could get into trouble. All right, maybe a hundred years ago, they didn't have this trouble with milk. And it would be on February 16th, 1917. Working quietly, police and county officers are drawing a gradually tightening web of evidence around Juan Lopez and Wilfredo Sebastian, wounded and held for the murder of policeman John Stonebreaker and the shooting of Chief of Police Howard Burke. There is little doubt that the men will be convicted when they come up for trial next month. Lopez, who confessed to shooting the officers, is suffering severely today following an operation by physicians yesterday, which the 41 caliber bullet fired by policeman Hanty was removed from his hip. Sebastian, cut across the chin by a bullet from Chief Burke's gun, is rapidly recovering but has refused to make any statement. Maybe because he was hit in the chin. His gun in the hands of the county attorney contains the same kind of bullets uh, of the ball removed from the Chief's wound, a 30-32 automatic with a copper jacketed ball. Ah, lots of shootouts then. Maybe we'll hear more about this in upcoming weeks. And finally, on September 17, 1892, 125 years ago in the Salina Daily Republican, the Chapman Howitzer, which is a paper in Chapman, I think, the Chapman Howitzer says that Abilene and Salina are paying the fares of disreputable women between those two points. We do not know how true this is when applied to those two cities, but the custom of sending bad characters out of town to get rid of them is vicious and should not be tolerated anywhere. The proper thing to do with any criminal, especially disreputable women, is to punish them as the law provides and not put them off or send them away simply to get rid of them. Something to keep in mind. Well, so much for old news this week. Uh, join us again next week when there'll be uh, more old news and more things to uh, strike your fancy. Until then, we'll see you yesterday.